back at it again with your biz news show monday to friday bringing you news that's going to keep you informed engaged and reacting in the most optimal way for your business investment and entrepreneurial activity today is the second of may let's talk about it we have an article hadybiznews.com 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 from uh, live new released uh, originally sourced and uh talking about the remittance growth of uh, 2018 the original uh, it was from a study from the inter-american Inter bank and it, and it shows some stuff that we've talked about this in the past we've talked about um the remittance trends and, and etc but again whenever we get some more more uh, uh clarity in the statistics i always have to come on air and make sure i share it so we understand just how stark the situation is right now from an economic perspective at least a traditional economic growth perspective and potential opportunities to 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 capitalize this very unique trend that Haiti is in and uh, the fact that we're not seeing any um, abatement in it. And, and so uh, in 2018, we saw Haiti had a remittance growth of 18%. 18%, what does that mean? The Latin American region as a whole, and that takes all of South America and includes the Caribbean, we saw 10.2% uh, in the GDP, right? And that is is up 10.2% uh, for the whole entire Latin American region, region from 8.2% the year before. So we are seeing an increase in trend for Latin America as a whole, but what we're seeing in Haiti is, is, is on another level. Um, and particularly when you look at Haiti, we have $3.3 billion of transfers. That represents 40%, specifically 39%, 39% of the Haitian GDP. Right, and you compare that to the, the the next person, the next country down the chain uh, that's comparable, and that you can only find that in El Salvador, and they're only at twenty one percent, right? Uh, followed by Honduras at twenty percent, and of course you have our next door neighbor, Dominican Republic, that's at eight percent remittance rate, right? So you know, let's let that sink in for a second. Let that sink in, right? 39% of our uh, GDP, the equivalent of 39% of our GDP is coming in in the form of remittance transfers, right? Cash coming in from workers abroad, meaning, you know, really Haiti's largest export, Haiti's largest export is physical labor, right? Physical, you know, physical meaning folks who are moving abroad to provide their efforts in a physical manner. Just let that sink in for a minute, right? Hey, the, the biggest, uh, the starkest example of the growth in uh, Haiti's GDP uh, uh, remittances is, is Haiti and Chile, right? Even though things have gone somewhat in and in things have abated considerably and to the point where Chile, Chile is now, you know, helping Haitians come back um, to Haiti with sponsored flights and, 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 and acquiring a visa and a bunch of different things now to make it even harder to come in. There's still, from at 2000, 2010, we had 5,000 Haitians in Chile. In 2017, we had 17,000 Haitians in Chile. Today, we have, this 2018 numbers, 180 Thousand, roughly 180,000 Haitian, Haitians living in Chile. I mean, that is exponential growth from 5,000 and within just eight years, 180,000. That's incredible. Uh, and right now, the remittances from Chile represent uh, roughly 5.9% of the other remit of, of the, the remittances that are coming from the different places, right? So 5.9% of remittances are coming from Chile. Uh, and, and overall, we have uh, the demographics of the folks who are there. Uh, we have, they're about two years, uh, two years in the country on average. Uh, their age is about 30 years old on average. Uh, about 71% have high school diplomas and 23% uh, have a university education. Okay, so just to get a sense of what, what you're looking at. And again, 86%, 86% are men. Right. So, uh, 
you know, it's it's uh, it's a very stark, incredible reality uh, for Haiti right now that uh, the biggest uh, revenue stream uh, for that's supporting the Haitian economy at the moment is remittances. So it always comes back to the question. It always comes back to the thought of how do we incorporate these remittances in a way where uh, they can help the the economy as a whole. Arguably, uh, what the Haitian government has done with the 1.5% uh, tax, or sorry, 1.5 uh, dollar tax on our remittances coming in, potentially would have the possibility. Okay, we get 40%. If you $3.3 billion and you charge 1.5% on transactions, it has the, certainly has the potential to bring in a lot of revenue that could, if we had a government that was well-functioning, not so corrupt, and, and really had the best interest of the people as a whole in, 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 as priority number one, it could potentially really serve as a catalyst to, for development, for funds for development. Instead, we're not, you know, there's a big question. There's a big, it's not even, we don't even have transparency underneath that. At the moment, uh, there's still a big question mark of, of how things are being administered. Because remember, when that tax, that tax on remittances first came in, the promise was, well, it's going to education. It's going to be earmarked, and every penny's going to go through education. But the practice is everything is coming from, it's coming into the, uh, 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 Bank of Haiti, and then is then set and put into the Haitian Treasury, which then, who knows, right? That's the problem because the budget comes from the Treasury, right? And and instead there is no mechanism to assure that that money from uh, the remittances are going towards education, right? And there is a lot of evidence that a lot of that money instead is going to other components of government administration that, you know, is it actually benefiting the populace as a whole and on the same level as education would be? Again, that's arguable. We still have stories where there's teachers who aren't getting paid, who are still on the streets and still uh, uh, demanding payment for almost a year of, of, of pay, right? Um, and, and of course, you know, we've had discussions before of, you know, you know, folks who are abroad and sending uh, remittances over. How can you structure those remittances in a way that uh, would benefit um, the people receiving it more? Instead of just sending money to, to subside, send them a slightly a larger amount so they could purchase products and be self-sufficient, self-sufficient. And then, and, then and then you can have to send less because now the person has potentially a business, a mashan, or something of that sort to allow them to subside without constant continual payments, right? So how do you structure that and, how, and who do you send it to to ensure, you know, the remittances become, uh, that, that one big lump sum of remittances becomes something that these folks can use to, to, to start something else entrepreneurial uh, in the country and, and for, for themselves. And, and and support them. So that's that's something else we talked about here. So uh, again, you know, we have to keep we have to keep remittances in mind uh, when it comes to a solution in, in the country, and particularly as you as you move into your entrepreneurial lane. Um, certainly, as we understand it, uh, the big income for the country is remittances. So, however possible, if you know, you ensure that your strategy of business, of entrepreneurial activity, incorporates that aspect to maximize your chance of success. Like what I'm doing here, give it a like. Think differently, give it a comment. You know, I'm going to respond to you. I, you know, I, I'm a bad habit of mine. I like to argue. <laughs> or maybe I'll just say, hey, appreciate the comment. Whatever it is, leave a comment. Hit that big red button, subscribe. Hit that notification button, share it to somebody. And we'll be back at it again because we're, we're here Monday to Friday every day breaking down economic news.